the crackdown on social media has been really bad the past few days, and I wanted to share something with you on this, because specifically this one has to do with abortion. You remember that back in, uh, what is it? It would have been 2017 or 18. I think it was 2017. Ireland had a big vote. No, it would have been 2018. Okay, so last year, Ireland had a big vote on a abortion bill because previously, very Catholic nation, Catholic Church has a lot of influence in Ireland. Originally, Ireland had a full-on ban on abortion, much more restrictive than anything the United States had. And now, we, uh, they don't because they had a vote and it was narrow, but they voted to overturn that and make abortion legal in Ireland. And that was a big deal with the media. They made a, made a big fuss about it. Well, I'm not saying that this necessarily would have changed anything because there's no way to know that. But Facebook, who people were accusing of blocking pro-life ads at the time, turns out that's exactly what they were doing. And if you don't believe me, don't take my word for it. Listen to the CEO of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, at a summit earlier. Um, there were other types of laws around the world that I think would be positive as well. Um, you know, for, for example, you know, we had an issue in, um, this is not an American example, but we had an issue in Ireland um, in the last year. There was a referendum um, on, on abortion. And it, during that election, leading up to that referendum, a, a bunch of uh, pro-life American groups advertised in this Irish, leading up to this Irish election, um, to, to try to influence public opinion there. And we went to the Irish and, and, and asked uh, folks there, say, well, how do you want us to handle this? You have no laws on the books that are relevant um, for whether we should be allowing this kind of speech in your election. And really, this doesn't feel like the kind of thing that a private company should be making a decision on. Um, and their, their response at the time was, you know, we don't currently have a law, so you need to, you know, make whatever decision you want to make. We ended up not allowing the ads. Well, now there you have it. Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, saying we had to make a judgment call and we decided let's not run the ads. So Facebook was specifically censoring pro-life American groups, his words, not mine, that wanted to advertise in Ireland. And I don't know what the ads looked like. I don't know what they were trying to promote, but they were trying to encourage people in Ireland to vote to protect the lives of the unborn. And Zuckerberg believes that it was his role as the CEO of Facebook to make sure that did not happen. Did it change the outcome? I have no idea. We'll probably never know. But what's important to note in this is that Zuckerberg openly admits to it, talks about it as though it's a good thing. He thinks that he is giving an example of how his company is being responsible by stopping those ads from being displayed in Ireland. Now, personally, I don't see the problem in a concerned group of Americans putting a pro-life ad on Facebook targeted in Ireland in the same way that I don't personally have a problem at all with if it had been the opposite. If we had, here in the state of Alabama, if there were people in other countries sending ads to the state of Alabama, and you can do that in Facebook, you can target that, that were against the abortion law. I don't like that they're promoting that, but I don't think that they should be censored away from being able to do it. They're not violating anybody's rights. Speech is not... Saying that somebody should do this or should do that is not the same as forcing them. If we had a whole bunch of Irish people showing up and uh, telling people with a gun to their head, you will vote for this or you will not vote for that, okay, that's a big problem. If you had Irish people coming over to the state of Alabama or just America in general and were hacking voting machines and changing people's votes, okay, that's a big problem. But a bunch of people in Ireland paying for ads over here in America, I'm sorry, I don't see that as an issue. Now, they're not American, so they're not protected under the First Amendment, but in the principle of free speech, 
not the First Amendment specifically, but the idea of free speech, that's their free speech. That's their right to say what they want. And as always, I'm in favor of more speech, not less. Now, Facebook is a private company. They have the right to censor whatever they want. And this is one of those rare cases where they were actually honest about it and specifically said, yeah, there were some conservatives that wanted to buy an ad. We blocked them. But most of the time they don't. They try to act as though they're this impartial, we don't really care what puts up, we want it to be a place for everybody, we want it to be a space for conservative voices just like everybody else, and then they do junk like this. Because I think that the average person that is watching this plays out, uh, play out can say with a fair amount of confidence that if the reverse were true, that if it were a pro-abortion ad, that Facebook wouldn't have done anything. And you can tell that based on the tenor and the demeanor of what Zuckerberg was saying, because what this really does is it shows us two things. First, that Facebook does have a specific bias when it comes to right-wing causes. Because you'll notice that he couldn't come up with an example of it happening on the other side of the political spectrum. He specifically came up with one where conservatives are being censored. And I've been the victim of this myself. I've had it happen. Now, uh, out of the three times that this has happened, twice Facebook corrected themselves and apologized, and that's fine. Not going to hold a grudge. But it does seem as though the only people that ever get censored on Facebook or any of the other social media sites, somehow it only happens to conservatives and never happens to liberals. Why is that? Why is that the case? And when this was happening, a whole bunch of conservatives, myself included, were saying, well, why are you getting rid of these people, but you're not getting rid of Farrakhan? And they said, okay, we'll get rid of Farrakhan. So that became their token liberal that they censored, I guess. But the thing is, I didn't want Farrakhan shut up. I just didn't want them to shut anyone up. That was the point of making that argument. Not saying, well, you're not doing this to Farrakhan. I want you to get rid of Farrakhan. I don't want them to get rid of Farrakhan. I'm glad that Farrakhan has a big platform to speak from because people will realize how back crap insane he is. But they are not fans of free speech. They don't like free speech. They want to control and manipulate and censor out the types of speech that they don't deem as worthy of being spoken. And unfortunately, that includes people that are pro-life, as Zuckerberg just admitted to. But the second thing that it really shows is that Facebook is willing to censor conservatives, but it would prefer the government do it. Because the whole point of making that comment was Zuckerberg was saying, there are some laws that we really should implement here in America, and we can look to other laws in other countries. And one example that I saw was when we did this in Ireland, and Ireland said they don't have a law against that, so we made the decision to censor it. So in other words, you're going to get censored either way. And if the government refuses to censor conservatives, we're going to do it, but we'd rather the government do it. Why would they rather the government do it? Because then it's out of their hands. Then they can just step back and go, sorry, can't do anything about it. Then they bear no responsibility for it. In fact, if you're looking at Zuckerberg and other officials from Facebook and Google, Twitter, if you look at their testimonies in front of Congress, one thing that is a consistent theme is basically they're saying, look, we don't want to have our hands in this. We would rather you regulate us. They're basically asking to be regulated. Why? Because they know that they're very large platforms and that because they have teams of lawyers and teams of people that can help them navigate the, re the regulation, that having that level of regulation is, A, going to protect them from competition, because a small company won't have an army of lawyers that can navigate those waters. And B, then they'll be able to throw their hands up in the air and say, sorry you got censored, we didn't have anything to do with it. When it comes to Zuckerberg's overarching point that, well, we're doing this, but we'd really rather the government doing it, look, I don't like the fact that Facebook's involved in it, but I still maintain that they have the right to do it as a private company. It's certainly not the government's job to decide what ads should and should not be allowed on social media. That's way beyond the pale. And so, as much as I dislike what Zuckerberg did... I dislike far more the idea that he has that governments ought to be the one controlling it. Because I don't trust Zuckerberg as far as, I can uh, as far as I can throw him, but that's still more than I trust the government to handle it. Yeah. 
you know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, no, no. It's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.